Hiya guys, welcome back to my channel. Hi, my name is Bumi, if you're new yet, welcome. So today we're talking about Genesis 4 and this is literally about, you know, the offspring of Adam and Eve after they've sinned because in the last one we spoke about how they allowed sin into the world and how God kicked them out of the Garden of Eden, his own heaven on earth. In Genesis 4, um, chapter 1, and Adam knew his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. So, you know, we all know what knew his wife meant. That means, you know, they had sex and she got pregnant and had Cain. And Cain is the first son that was brought into the world with sin. And she again is brother Abel and Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. So they had two specific job roles. And um, Abel was, you know, a shepherd. And Cain was just a farmer. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offerings. But unto Cain and to his offerings he had no respect. And Cain was wroth, and he countenance and his countenance he fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fall? Fallen, if thou does it well, shalt thou not be accepted? Um, and if thou does it not well, sin lieth at the door. Before I go into um, the meaning of all of this as I've noted in my in my Bible notes um, there's so much to you know unpack from the situation that happened and how like you know little actions can result into like a very very big consequences and unto thee shall be his desires and thou shall rule of and thou shall rule over him and Cain talked with Abel his brother and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him so this is how we have the second scene in the world which is murder um is is actually crazy <laughs> and the Lord said unto Cain where is where is Abel thy brother and he said I know I know not Am I my brother's keeper? And so, um, I would like to start with the absolute sheer audacity of this boy, Cain. The audacious response would trigger anger within me as a human, especially when, you know, God saw that you were angry with your brother and then you killed him and then you're like, oh, am I my brother's keeper? Like, how dare you? Like, that's your little brother. You should care about your little brother, you know, because you came from the same flesh and bones, from the same mom and dad. So obviously you are your brother's keepers and it's the sheer, um, audacious, aggressive response to God in the regards of it wasn't remorseful at all when it comes to his own action and he let his anger get the best of him so it's like it took life that he did not create then uttered the disrespectful word to, to god satan was in cain using him because he allowed access to the devil via his wealth so he allowed satan to wreak havoc on him because of his anger and god has told him with your anger there is sin at the door you're allowing sin to come into you because when you're angry have you ever been so livid because someone has done something to you and you just black out and before you know you don't know what you did next but you blacked out and this is where one man punch comes into play especially when you see people that end up in you know those bad places where they are isolated from society in general and i feel like this is something that can easily easily happen because it's like in the midst of your anger if you don't like you know walk away from the situation to calm down a little bit it's easier said than done because i have got into that stage as well when it comes to my anger and i just like you know instead of like literally stepping away sometimes i do step away but in those rare cases when i don't it's almost kind of like i'm in like full rage and through that, through our abhorrent, so so much anger and so much, you know, um, you know, ego. Because it's your ego that's hurt, isn't it? When you're angry, it's your, it's something that they picked at that ticks you off to the point that 
there was no return and i feel like god did one thing there is sin at the door and if you keep getting angry you're going to let sin in and that's exactly what cain did he allowed sin to come into his life and also in the bible there's this pattern as well of the last born always being rewarded type of thing because they don't expect society to consider them as the leader or as um you know some someone of substance or someone to look towards as a false born you automatically think because i come first I should be given that respect and that you know that loyalty and all of that and yeah this is why I, I was writing this is why God always rewards the last born because they don't expect power the first born expects to yield the power in the family and they let it get to their head and I feel like also because of you know his offering not being acceptable we don't know why you know Cain's offering wasn't acceptable perhaps maybe it has to do with his intentions because a lot of the time um it's not about our actions it's about our intentions behind it that god looks at i mean an example of that can be like saul and david in in our eyes saul barely did anything that requires like harsh treatments but um but to us david did kill someone's you know husband just to take um take her in and have you know sex with her and have children with her and everything but god um says david is always a man after his own heart because every time david sins and he's been exposed to him or he's been revealed to him that he's sin he runs after god is always apologetic is always sorry is always asking god please search my heart and um search my heart let me know that i have a clean heart within me renew my mind renew my soul you know he's always making sure that he's trying his best even when he does things he always gets up and try again and all of that can be exhibited in like you know psalms and i feel like that's what it was in general the first sin of mankind was disobedience this was why sin was included this is why these sins were included in the ten commandments for the israelites and i wrote um cain let his anger consume him into violence taking a life that he didn't create disturbing the orders of being fruitful and multiplying the ego and arrogance of cain resembles that of satan and i feel like um you know sometimes we get in our head that oh because we've done a x y and z we deserve this and the third and sometimes it's all about checking our heart posture is what we're doing um beneficial or is it to struggle our own ego is what we're doing um something that pleases god or is it to show that you're a good person to society is one of those two things that god always looks at you know it's not about you know how giving you are because a lot of people like to show showmanships you know for example like show people oh look at me praying being a good prayer warrior when really and truly it's like behind closed doors they're doing things that doesn't align well with god's word or you know god's word they're not living by god's standard or god's words or you know trying to be a good person that is always chasing after god's heart i feel and so that's what it gives me as well in this it's just so interesting because it's just kind of like you see the pattern of humankind and you see how like our ego got in the in the way of us committing atrocity first it was eve you know wanting to be like a god like wanting to be like god you know say and implanting things into our head to help us boost our egos you know and it's, it just shows the the thinking and the mentality and the um, and our patterns as humans and what results into our downfall and why god was like maybe they don't know what they're doing let me write this out you know loud and boldly so that they refrain from things like this when he wrote it in the ten commandments to the israelites because that way it's a lot more spelled out it's not like god did not tell you he did and now you know there's no excuse for your actions basically so I feel like in the beginning, maybe perhaps people did not know that what they were committing was, you know, seeing that had like huge consequences to their action. God always tells us like, you know, um, anger, like um, soft words turn away anger, something along those lines. And that's why like God is always, always making sure that we check our heart posture and our ego. We always put our ego in check because our ego can do a lot of damage to relationship around us um if we're not careful and then i wrote um 
and the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is that countenance full? In my notes, I wrote, He was angry. Another thing God considers is sin, because his anger took over and resulting to killing Cain, and it resulting to Cain killing Abel. That's why God always tells us to be slow to speak and anger, and telling us that soft speech turns away wrath. God knows how much our emotions can control us to doing despicable things that God doesn't condone. Chapter 5. You know, Cain, um, which is like, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very rough, and his countenance fell. And although Cain wasn't diligently in his, um, diligent, wasn't diligent in his offerings, no thoughts, no efforts, nothing. He probably wasn't acting delightful when gathering his crops to sacrifice for God. And to be fair, I really don't know his heart posture at this point. But I do know that God did say, if it was of good, you know, if it was of good, it would have given him. You know some sort of reward but it wasn't good up to god's standards so who am i to question that because at the end of the day sometimes a lot of the times when something is all good for our boss if they're not being biased towards us and it's plainly about our work um then it's like you need to improve on something or anything like that if that makes sense this is how i relate to it in general this is how i'm trying to make sense of it however i do realize that it does have arrogance towards him towards when god asked him oh what happened to your brother you know like and i was like my, my brother's keepers so you can tell that he has a bit of like arrogance to him and in chapter 10 and he said why hast thou done the voice of that brother's blood cry out and um, cry it unto me from the ground so clearly like you know abel was probably like his spirit was vexed his spirit was like crying asking god what's going on why did my brother do what he did to me taking my life away and all of that and i mean even though like one of the curse that god gave adam and eve was that they will see death it wasn't a death that was taken away from them. It was going to be something of natural occurrence of old, super, super old age. Um, because back in the day, they used to live up to 1,000 years. <laughs> so, yeah. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which art open a mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou stillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thy own strength. A fugitive and a vagabond <laughs> shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. You shouldn't have come here at the scene and give a sassy response towards God. There are consequences for every action that you do. The result of good or bad depending on you. God gives you your reward accordingly. Do good, reap good. Do evil, you reap evil. Even if someone has done bad things and gotten away with it in their lifetime, they will reap the benefit of it through their generations or in death. This is where generational causes begin, began. Because of Cain's action, the, corruptions, the corrupt son of God saw them as an easy available access because they lived a godless life. His generation were easier to corrupt, which is something that we'll explore in the next videos that is coming in chapter 12 when thou still at the ground it shall not ends yield unto thee a strength a fugitive and a rich fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth then i wrote just like satan cain fell into pride the way i saw the story of cain and abel is that of our pridefulness cain was prior for that and that was the beginning of his downfall cain ego was bruised due to the rejection which led to him being prideful as he couldn't compare why god accepted his brother's offering and not his then the pride turned into jealousy which turned to anger resulting into the death of abel to top it off cain didn't, didn't go to god with a remorseful heart and seek forgiveness instead they brushed off killing his brother ends this harsh treatment ends, ends this harsh punishment god hates pride because of lucifer pride is the roof of all evil pride produces evil thoughts and actions lucifer fell from grace because he got prideful and wanted to be worshipped like god is creator cain and um, satan were given the same punishment of roaming the earth aimlessly from god's grace and i feel like to be honest um you know when god was like to you know cain you're allowing the end um, scene at the door the scene is at the door do not allow it in or whatever he did not listen and that was just satan's you know easy access way to like wreck havoc and let Cain have be like those godless um people generations um which we're gonna explore down the road because that generation was probably what tinted the old earth but it's something to explore in the next couple of videos 
build and in chapter 14 build thou art driven me out this day from the face of the earth and from that face shall i eat and i shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth and it shall come to pass that everyone that found it me shall slay me and the lord said unto him therefore whosoever slayeth cain venture shall be taken on him sevenfold and the lord set a mark upon cain lest any findings him shall kill should kill him so even in god's rightful anger because of what he's done to his brother and his sassy response to god and his unremorseful heart you know god still took pity on him because god realized oh that was so harsh of a punishment you know because no one is going to be rom roaming around like a vagabond people are going to know what he did and want to like kill him and stuff like that um you know and to be honest i feel like because Adam and Eve had other sons and daughters, so maybe others one that were not mentioned will have want, wanted to like seek his head, if that makes sense. And then, and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod and on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. So this is not the Enoch that walked with God. This is the Enoch of Cain, one of Cain's um children, you know. Um, and I wrote, you know, where like God was like, therefore whosoever slains Cain, venture shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him shall should kill him. So I wrote because God detests murder, hence the reason why I gave Cain the mark on his head. Even in his rightful anger, God gave him leniency. So, unto Enoch was born Erad, and Erad begat Meujel. And Meujel, I hope I'm not butchering, I know I'm butchering these names, um, begat um, Metisili. And Metisili begat Lamak, and Lamak took unto him two wives. So, this is the first mention of um, polygamous relationship in the sense of Lamak taking two wives, which is not the natural order of what marriage should be according to God's words but we can see that obviously like Cain's generation were godless generation um they did not live according to God's words so they did things that they felt fit you know and then um Lamech took unto himself two wives and the name of and the name of the one was Ada and the name of the name was Zilla and Ada bared Jamal he was the father of such a dwelling intent and of such um, as have cattle and his brother's name was Jabel it was the father of all such as handled the herbs and the organs and Zillel she also bared Tobel Cain an instructor of every artificial in bronze and iron and the sister of Tobel Cain was Nema and Lamak said unto his wife Adel and Zillel hear my voice ye wives of Lamak hearken unto my speech for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be advanced seven times seven folds, truly Lamech seventy um folds basically. And now we hear like you know, because they live such godless life, um Lamech was boasting about being a notorious killer. Satan and his demon were definitely walking through Lamech as he boasted about his severe violence tendencies. He was filled with hatred in his heart by comparing the severity of his violence to his grandpa, Cain. Chapter 25, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bared a son, and called his name Sith. For God said she had appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew, and to Seth, and to Seth to him also there was a bo and there was born a son, and he called his name Enos, then the, um, then begat men to call upon the name of the Lord. So I feel like Seth was um, a man after God's heart, and his generations were the one that was preaching about God and was telling other like probably like Cain's generation to like repent for their sins, to like you know stay away from the crimes and. They really, really um, worked with God faithfully because down the line of Seth, you will see how like we have like, you know, the greatest man that worked with God, which is Enoch. Um, we have Metuselah as well. Noah came from Seth lineage and how like, you know, everything is just unraveling because a lot of this, um, you know, theology um, has a meaning and reason behind them. And yeah, um, that's what this chapter four is basically all about so i feel like when it comes to sin 
yes we're not made perfect and yes our ancestors millions ago allowed sin into the world it's all about our heart posture it's all about how we process the information and how remorseful we are to god and i feel like that that is what it is like we can see um the difference in in response to sin from adam and eve feeling shameful about what they've done to the seed um which is cain feeling arrogant and not caring if that makes sense so you can see this stark difference in response to sin and it could be the response that we humans have towards god sometimes we hide from god thinking he's super super upset with us now that jesus has died he's probably he's not upset with us anymore you know and then we hide from him and then you know we instead of having a conversation and going to him with a remorseful heart or we harden our heart towards God and we're like, yeah, it's not my fault that I did it. You know, it's this person's fault without realizing how their own actions contributed to the reactions of um, what happened. So is a is two ways to look at sin in general, you know. And this is why I'm so, so, so thankful that Jesus died on the cross for us because honestly like it just gets worse for humanity in general and yet through that and um, through it all god still loves humanity to the point that he kept making confidence upon confidence that kept getting broken until he made that confidence with himself which is jesus christ and placed the scene of our of the world on jesus you know um so that you know he can um tie us back to him again so that the holy spirit can dwell within us again because the holy trinity was in the beginning of the world like you know god jesus and the holy spirit and because of sin in the old testament you know only the chosen ones can really speak to god the ones that are after god's heart continually the ones the unexpected ones type of thing you know um whereas other people if you're filled with sin you can't have that i mean you can talk to god but it's just there's a process to the to the whole situation whereas now if you sin directly you can always like get convicted because once you're you've said jesus, jesus christ as your lord and personal savior you get convicted and then the holy spirit ministers to you after you've apologized and everything and then it's a lot easier to reconnect that relationship and all of that so um honestly genesis is such an interesting book there's so much juiciness to come and i pray that god continues to give me the strength to actually like continuously do this i don't care how long it takes me i just want to continuously let you guys know what the actual bible says rather than you know what has been preached out and twisted into you know things that you know doesn't glorify god in general i would say and also please read the bible for yourself get to know the bible for yourself understand the bible for yourself know god on a personal relationship for yourself not just through me or through your favorite pastor your church pastor or just on tiktok or something just make sure that you actually have that relationship with god for yourself because truly and honestly it works all things out it clears so much away from you just like the spirit of god was hovering the earth when it was dark and void is doing the same thing in our lives as well the darkness and the void in our minds it, it scours everything around and then god comes in and clears it all out and you know with his words with his love gives you the desire to read the bible you know because I was one of those people that did not have the desire to read the Bible. I found the Bible extremely boring. I'm not going to lie. That's my honest truth. But I was honest with God regarding that feeling. And God saw that and used things that would entice me into getting to know him more. And I feel like God meets you where you're at. You, there's no way you can go above or below the lowest of low. God will still meet you where you're at and rescue you from yourself and rescue you from anything that is pulling you down mentally, emotionally and physically, spiritually as well. You know, so yeah, thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next one. I hope it was not too much of a ramble. <laughs> Anyways, bye guys and have a great week. See you next week as always. Promise. Great. Bye. <laughs>